Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical inequality. So we have square root of n minus the square root of n minus 1 is less than 1 over 100 and we're going to try to find the smallest integer value n that satisfies this inequality. So there's obviously more than one integer that satisfies it. Let's go ahead and start by testing some n values. We're also going to be looking at a couple of things at the end, including a graph. So let's go ahead and replace n with a perfect square so that at least we can take out some of it. So suppose n is equal to 16, then we're going to get square root of 16 minus the square root of 15, which is equal to 4 minus the square root of 15. And that is going to be approximately 0 0.127. So kind of close to 1 eighth, right? Well, that is bigger than 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01, right? That's actually much, much bigger. So what happens if you decrease the n value? The difference is going to get bigger. Let's go ahead and increase the n value and use 100. If n is equal to 100, we're going to get the square root of 100 minus the square root of 99, which is 10 minus the square root of 99. And that is approximately 0 0.05. So that's a lot smaller, but still greater than 100th. But we're getting closer to 100th, right? So now what happens if n is equal to 1 million or 10 to the power 6? Then you get something like this. 10 to the power 6, the square root of that, minus the square root of 10 to the power 6 minus 1, which is 999,999, by the way, right? And this difference is actually going to be very close to 0 0.0005. Uh-oh, this is way too small, right? Obviously. It's not actually like way too small, but it's kind of way too small. So somewhere in between lies our solution. So there is definitely a tipping point between this number and that number that gives us what we want. Okay? First of all, I want you to notice that... I want you to notice that limit as n approaches infinity of the difference square root of n minus the square root of n minus 1 is 0. Why? These expressions actually get closer and closer. You're going to realize you use a very large number, its square root, and the square root of the number before that, they're going to be super duper small, right? Obviously, this problem is really hard to solve by guess and check. At least... At this point, don't you think? So, here's the trick. We're going to go ahead and consider the conjugate of this expression. So, square root of n plus the square root of n minus 1. Multiplied by its conjugate is going to give us from difference of two squares n minus the quantity n minus 1, which is n minus n plus 1, which is 1. Awesome. Now, these two are conjugates, but also reciprocals, right? Great. So we can go ahead and do the following. Since our expression contained the difference of two radicals, we can go ahead and write this as the square root of n minus the square root of n minus 1 as 1 over the square root of n plus the square root of n minus 1. Now, why is it better to have an addition problem rather than the difference? Because... You'll see in a little bit why, okay? Let me explain that. First of all, we do want this expression to be less than 100th, correct? So we kind of have reciprocals on both sides. And since n is an integer, and in this case, obviously, it's going to be an integer greater than 1, so it's definitely positive, the fraction on the left-hand side is positive. So when you flip both sides, that's an important concept, right? Whenever you have 1 over a is less than 1 over b, this does not always imply a is greater than b because you also have to check whether a and b are both positive, both negative, or one is positive, the other one is negative, so on and so forth. So you kind of have to check that. But in this case, we are good. So we can reciprocate. Is that a word? I don't know. But we can basically flip both sides, and that's going to give us square root of n plus the square root of n minus 1 is greater than 100. Not only we got a sum, but we also got an integer comparison as opposed to a fraction. Because think about it. When we replace n with several different values, 
it's really hard to predict the difference. I mean, definitely as n goes up, the difference becomes smaller and smaller, but how do you know when that's gonna be smaller than 100th, right? That's the trick. So, in this case, we're in much better shape, all right? Now, here's what we're gonna consider next. I have the sum of two things that are supposed to be closer together. Notice that we said that as an approach is infinity, uh, the, this, uh, the one over that stuff is actually gonna, I mean, I'm talking about this. And you can tell by this one that as n approaches infinity, this is gonna approach infinity, and you can tell that this limit is actually zero. So we are talking about two numbers that are super duper close, and their sum is greater than 100. So I'm thinking, what is a half of 100? 50, awesome. So what is 50 squared? 2,500, why am I doing all that? Because I'm about to replace n with this number so that its square root can be 50 and 50 plus 50 is like 50, 50, right? I mean, it's gonna make 100, make sense? So let's go ahead and suppose n is equal to 2,500. In that case, we're gonna get something like this, the square root of 2,500 plus the square root of 2,499, great. Now notice that this is equal to 50, but this is less than 50. So their sum is gonna be less than 100, right? But wait a minute, you want that sum to be greater than 100. So this number is not gonna work. Why did we test it? Because that's the tipping point, think about it. And also, this is a 50, right? So if you add 50 and this number, the square root of 2,499, that's gonna be approximately 99.989998999898, 99 so on and so forth. You get the idea. It is very close to 100, but less than 100. Makes sense? But very close. So what happens if you increase the n a tiny bit? Because smaller n is not gonna work for sure. What if n is equal to 2,501? Then in that case, square root of 2,501 is definitely greater than 50 because 2,501 is greater than 2,500. And the square root of 2,500 is equal to 50, but I can write it as greater than or equal to 50 because it's equal to 50, makes sense? Okay, that's kind of weird, right? Because I wanted to get two inequalities that I can add. And when I add, of course, I kind of have to go with the stricter case because the sum cannot be 100 for sure, right? So this means that the sum here is definitely greater than 100, which is what we wanted. Awesome. Which means n equals 2,501 is the smallest number. And it's the smallest because anything larger than this will work. Anyways, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And we'll finish up with that and another thing. Okay, great. So this is the graph of the square root of n minus the square root of n minus one. And as you can see here, as n approaches infinity, f of n is gonna approach zero. Anyways, that's pretty much it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.